Uh, hello, hello. Welcome to Verbling. I am Teacher Oakley. And for the next hour, uh, we're going to be practicing conversational English. I'll be asking you questions to try to get you to do a little description, uh, possibly just a wee bit of opinion. And uh, uh, overall, to be able to discuss about hobbies. Now, um, for those of you viewers in Verbling, this topic, hobbies, super common for anybody who is preparing for an IELTS exam, CAE, TOEFL, TOEIC. This is a very, very common topic in any of the standardized English tests. Good one to practice uh, for those of you who are doing that. Hello, Heidi. Hello. Hello. Uh, Heidi, can I ask you something? Um, have you been having any problems slow getting into classes? Yes. Um, um, before, um, at noon, maybe they're, they're very crowded uh, student. Um, yeah, at 10 a.m. in Japanese time. So all the class was full of booked, fully booked. Then ah. I couldn't enter. I, I, even though even though I booked already, but loading time it took, took seven minutes. Okay. Well, okay. I can understand. Maybe I can understand that uh, if there's a fully booked class. But I've consistently in the last few days have had diff slow. Uh, opening a class, obviously, it's my responsibility to open a class, and it seems to be taking twice as much time as normal. I don't know why. How about you, Max? Hi, Max. By the way, uh, it happened only uh, <laughs> hung out a uh, bubbling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, go other places. It's normal. All right. Mm, okay. I don't know. I was just wondering if anybody else is experiencing it, or is it a personal thing for me? Max, have you had any? Have you noticed any such thing? A little slowness entering the hangout, or no? No. No. All right. It could be. Could very well just be me. All right. Maybe I have a little bit of a slower connection. I probably should check my connection speed. Uh, okay. Our topic is hobbies. Hey, okay. <laughs> you guys, uh, pretty sure I kind of know you guys, your hobbies. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm going to have to ask you weird questions because I know too much about you guys already. <laughs> uh, Heidi, I want you to tell me about a friend... Do you have a friend who has a strange hobby, or what is the strangest hobby that one of your friends or family or someone you know has? My friend has a lot of hobbies. Uh, he uh, he has some what the uh, real flower. He uh, um, pick up a real flower in his her garden. Then he put it in a uh, between the uh, newspapers, it dry up the flat. Do you know that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay, that, I have to. Get, I'm sorry, but I have to ask you an immediate follow-up question. Um, when I was a kid, we would pick the four-leaf clovers. If you know <laughs> what I mean, right? <laughs> and we would stick them like in a book. You know, mm -hmm. and I'd stick them in a book between the covers and then put a weight on the book mm -hmm. so that they would dry nice and flat. Actually, there's a word for that. They call it pressing. Yeah, and uh, you, uh, she used, uh, used that flower and they would put on the, uh, some paper uh, making mm -hmm. some picture, like. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, I've seen them used for uh, like a bookmark. Like they slip it. Yes, yes, uh, like that, but bigger than bookmarks. Right. Okay. I, I I've seen bookmarks like that. That is an interesting hobby, I must say. That is a very interesting hobby. 
I had a friend when I was growing up. Does, does anybody do this in Japan or in Russia? You can answer this, both of you. I had a friend, my next door neighbor and good friend growing up. He uh, caught insects, particularly butterflies, but other insects, and he put them in a jar with chloroform. Basically, gassed them. He killed them. And then he w he had a board, and he would use pins to stick the butterfly up on the board. He had this collection, and he he would uh, like type out a little label of the Latin name Referendus Mortabertus, or and then um, blue plate butterfly or whatever. Their little names. He had his own little museum in his room <laughs> with various insects. I remember mostly butterflies. Does anybody do that? Or does this sound bizarre to you? Uh, Heidi, does anybody do that in Japan? Do you mm -hmm. even know what I'm talking about? Or does it sound crazy? Oh, yes. Uh, some, in the summer vacation, a uh, Japanese student needed to make something and uh, correct something. Then uh -huh. uh, people brought a lot of flowers and uh, like that dried up. And put on the um, paper. Then uh, the, they need to check the name and uh, what kind of. <laughs> and another student put a lot of butterflies, uh, ah. drag, um, dragonfly, like that. Yeah, dragonflies. Yeah, I remember that actually. <laughs> <laughs> Memories. Max, uh, how about in Russia? Does anybody do either of those things? Press flowers or collect? Butterflies and insects. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, okay. I've heard about that, that but but never seen. Uh, I don't know. Question: Why did you write her herbarium? <laughs> Do you know this word? No. I can surmise what it means. Uh, it's. Uh, I can guess when you collect quickly. when you collect these dry flowers. This collection uh -huh. called Herbarium. Is it? Yeah. Check oh, it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Interesting. All right. Well, great. That's a new word for me as well. Terrific. All right. Let's start a Herbarium. <laughs> uh, might get into trouble with that. You know, uh, the slang word, a slang word for marijuana is, is herb. Okay. <laughs> so if, if I say I'm going to start an herbarium, the police may come and get me, you know, thinking I'm growing marijuana or something. <laughs> uh, I have to be careful with that one. Uh, now, Max, uh, I know that you have a very interesting hobby. Do any of your friends have a kind of a strange hobby or a hobby that's off the beaten path. I think every hobby, um, which are unusual for us, uh, how can I say that? <laughs> it's like if you if you don't have this hobby, it's unusual for you. It mm -hmm. seems strange. For, even. Fishing for me seems very strange. Ah, okay. <laughs> but, but a lot of people love it. And, you know. <laughs> right. Okay. I can understand that. But uh, make sure you get the right verb tense, which you said, which are unusual for us or hobbies. Oh, okay. If you said hobbies, you're correct. Hobbies which are unusual. Never mind. That is correct. Uh, or a hobby which is. Okay, there's a case where we use which is the verb uh, has to match the subject noun. A who hobby who which is. Yeah. Who collect money also for me. I don't know, crazy. <laughs> hey, I collect money, but it's all the same kind of money. And I put it in the bank. <laughs> uh, yeah. Even uh, I know some kind of Mm, even it's like one cent. It's uh, in Russian, it's kapika. 
one kopeka, and it's exactly, um, for example, twenty thousand year, one kopeka, and it would be cost, um, for example, I don't know, them two hundred bucks. Two hundred bucks. Yeah, because in this year, this kopeka was. Uh, Oh, it's made it's only rare. Ah. yeah, only only one thousand things. Ah, yeah, okay, a limited edition. All right, well, that's yeah. a that's a little vocabulary worth knowing when you're talking about hobbies, because many people collect things as a hobby, and uh, limited editions are something that everyone seeks. Limited edition coin, limited edition stamp. Limited edition action figure toys. Some people I, collect I toys. Euro, Euro coin. Uh, Euro coin? Yeah, uh, one face is the same, but the uh, reverse is different. It, it depends on the country. Ah. Uh, so, um, uh, Germany or French uh, Euro, it's very easy to correct. But Malta or small countries, it's very difficult. Ah. I did not know that. At one point, I think it was to celebrate the bicentennial in the United States, they issued quarters. I don't know if you know this. They had quarters with uh, George Washington's head on one side, quarter of a dollar, quarters. And on the other side was each state, 50 states. Mm -hmm. And I, I think they issued like five a year for 10 years, something like that. I, I'm not totally sure. But uh, those were also very highly collected. Um, so I can understand. Uh, Rafa, hello. Welcome. How are you? Hello, teacher. Okay. Hello, everybody. Sorry for the delay. Uh, not a problem. Uh, welcome to the class. Hey. And hey. also, uh, I need to welcome Ken as well. Hey, Ken. Yes. Hello. How are you? Pretty good. Thank you very much. Uh, we're talking about hobbies, and we sort of got started by talking about strange hobbies or uh, maybe hobbies that our friends or people we know have that are a little bit odd. Rafa, um, let me ask you the same question. Do you know anyone that has a little bit of a strange hobby? Yeah, my brother-in-law um, collected butterflies, every type of <laughs> butterflies, <laughs> and I, th there are many people that do it, but I think it's so weird because, um, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> they are collecting life, um, life animals, and, uh, but he has, he has a, um, uh, uh, disculpa. Um, he apologized that he bite when he buy the butterflies. He they are all death. They are not alive. <laughs> but but okay. I think it's so crazy. There are um, some of them that are very very nice, pretty nice, so wonderful. But. Uh, I prefer to see the butterflies living and flying <laughs> over the garden. <laughs> That's an uh -huh. uh, old book with a lot of um, uh, nails point, pointing his his yeah. hat. But uh, <laughs> there are many people. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> <There are> many... <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I was earlier in the class. I was talking about my neighbor doing the same thing, and I also I used it as an example of what I thought was a weird hobby. Uh, so yeah, that's funny. Dead, not alive. You prefer your butterfly butterflies alive, 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 alive. right? And I'm sure they had pins in them, not nails. Yeah, pins. <laughs> um, <laughs> wham, wham, wham. <laughs> Old nail. Some pins. <laughs> Some pins. Yeah, pins. Okay. Uh, very good. Yeah, I'm with you. You know, the part that I thought was weird, actually, that I, actually perhaps a little scary for me, was my friend who collected the 
dead butterflies. He always had chloroform, which I chloroform I immediately associate with you know you put it over someone's face and knock them out, throw them in the car and drive them to a country house. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You are right. Be careful with them. Uh, yeah, it kind of made me nervous. I was always slightly suspicious. I would go, you know go to his house and play with his toys and I'd look nervously up at the butterflies. What, what am I going to have my head turned the wrong way? He's going to sneak up behind me. Oh. Did the person uh, have some injection to the butterfly to keep that freshness? Is that right? Yeah. My friend had some injection. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, he used the primitive chloroform technique in a jar. So <laughs> I don't know. Uh, an injection that must be hard. Inject the butterfly. Uh, okay. Anyway, thank you. That was that was fun. Ken, how about you? Do you know anybody with a kind of offbeat uh, hobby? Offbeat? Ah, uh, not sure, <laughs> but. Uh... Some of, some of my friends are collecting stones at the beach. Okay. Yeah. Stones? Stones, yeah. Kind of beautiful stone, probably, for him. All right. Not at the beach? He doesn't at collect shells? Not yeah. shells? Maybe shells and stones, probably. Maybe he, right. he says he's uh, he making some object. Yeah. <laughs> from, you know, from this. Probably. Actually, I have a question, a weird question. Uh, and I found that people, uh, people who collecting uh, garbage, not not garbage, a kind of uh, uh, kind of garbage like thing at the beach. He appeared on news local newspaper after this. I know, and after that, I noticed what he was he is doing at the beach. I often see him <laughs> collecting garbage at the beach. Yeah. Uh, I, I noticed his published after, after I read the, uh, the article. Ah, okay. Yeah, same kind of thing, yeah. Well, I have a weird follow-up question. Mm -hmm. You may not know the answer. I do not know the answer. Serious mm -hmm. question. Sometimes the things you collect may be stones or shells at the beach, but there's you probably know what I mean. Sea mm -hmm. glass. It's like... Oh, yeah, right. Blue, green, it's mm -hmm. polished from the water and the sand. Right. Right. Yeah. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful, but where the heck does it all come from? <laughs> Why every beach I've ever been in North America, mm. South America, Europe, Asia, had their sea glass? Maybe where all that glass come from? <laughs> throw <laughs> away the bottle on the beach or from the sea or something like that. Yeah, all right. Just seems like. Everywhere I've ever been, I can find sea glass yeah. on the beach. Actually, the garbage in the ocean uh, has a, is a big problem now. It's called uh, Great Pacific Ocean Garbage Patch. You know, <laughs> bottles can be, you know, uh, can be, uh, maybe bottles is also dangerous, you know. The, these, I, our plastic is not at biodegradable now. Uh -huh. So the, the, these uh, garbage uh, turn to be a small, tiny particle in the end. And it's uh, if and the sunlight reflects to then it uh, seems like plankton for fish, so fish eating these plastic or garbage, and they accumulate fish body, and uh, human eats fish. Uh, fish. fish. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Well, thank you very much for putting me off my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So much for those tuna steaks I have in my refrigerator. I'll just throw them away. Um, <laughs> no, I won't. I'll eat them anyway. Uh, yeah, no, I... Uh, how big... Another follow-up question, kind of off the topic of hobbies, but here's a hobby of the world, creating a giant island of garbage. How big is it now? You just mentioned it, and I laughed. About uh, if you it. Google a Great Pacific Ocean's garbage patch, you can uh, see the picture and the video. Yeah. All right. What's it Maybe called again? Because I may want to do Great, exactly that. I think Great Pacific Ocean Garbage Belt. 
if my memory is correct. Great Pacific Ocean garbage. Belt of garbage patch. Uh, I forgot. Belt. Mm, maybe patch. Patch sounds funny. After a big earthquake in Japan, uh, there are a lot of rubbish, including cars and uh, ships, um, uh, floating on the uh, Pacific Ocean. It's bigger than the island. No, it reached in Florida. So Japanese government what? paid money for the volunteers. It reached Florida? Yeah. Um, That's a long trip. One year or so. Wow. Okay, so it washed out to sea. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of uh, house, uh, uh, rubbish of house or um, a lot of things. Okay. Oh my gosh. That's wild. Okay. Oh, there we go. Uh, thanks, Ken, for the info. All right. Uh, that'll be you're welcome. Fun for me later. <laughs> fun activity for me later. Uh, okay. It's my hobby learning crazy, stupid facts <laughs> that I will never need. Uh, Talk, on the line, if I may, talking about. Yeah. Crazy things that people collect, but also very interesting. I am. I know a, a guy from Peru that uh, is so famous too. Is Doctor Cabrera? He collected uh, Ica stones. Ica stones are um, stones that they presume. Um, he presume are very old with dinosaurs engraved in it with people um, make, um, making surgeries and it's so funny and so interesting to see it that, um, that uh, it's pretty nice. I went there um, two or three years ago with my wife and it's so incredible because you can see more than 20,000 stones um, in, in, a lit in a little house with a lot of engraved things on it, dinosaurs, any kind of dinosaurs, any kind of fish, all fishes. And it's, uh, they say, he said that it's from ancient aliens that <laughs> became to <Yeah>. the earth. <laughs> but it's, it's so funny and so interesting to see it because it's pretty nice. I, I enjoy a lot only seeing the engraving more than thinking where they come from. There are different theories about if the farmers of the Atacama Desert, that is very near to Ica in Peru, uh, that fo they found this stone. But um, it's, uh, when you have a stone of this in your hand, you feel something different. And it's so inter very interesting. I recommend you to, <laughs> to see it. I I post a link. I post a link. I'm looking at the link, and I'm my mouth is open. Uh, what? No way. I I mean, okay. Um, all right. I recommend that you see it, or I I recommend that you check it out. So I instead of I recommend to you, I recommend yeah. that you you check it out. All right. Uh, Ica stones and okay now. Pronunciation, Rafa, dinosaurs, long eye. Dinosaur. Dino. What on earth? Wait a minute. What on earth? Uh, th these can't be really dated. Are they checked? Are they like carbon dated or whatever they scientifically do to prove the dates? There are several research about the thing, but um, uh, one of them says that it's impossible to date it because um, they are made in fire. They are the stones. There is a interesting process in made it, and the first step is to put in fire. And for this reason, it's impossible to date it. But uh, there are another documentaries on the TV that um, you can find in the desert. They are. Um, like an archaeological site, and they are uh, inside the earth, 
without no touch of everybody. You, know, um, you, can, you can think it's from ancient times, but it's not date. Weird. Weird. Okay, well that's that's freaky. Okay, that's that's a topper for a strange hobby. That's a crazy thing to collect, but I can understand it. When I was a kid, uh, we used to collect fossils because they <laughs> they were there. They were there. They weren't too hard to find, really. Um, mostly not not like dinosaurs. It's not like we were building a dinosaur in our backyard. <laughs> Nothing like that. Just the really simple ones. Simple trilobites, I think they're called. Trilobites and very, very basic marine animals from way back when the earth was young. I don't know. Fish or something. <laughs> fish. Yeah, primitive fish. Not even like looking like fish, but very primitive. Yeah. Um, oh, I remember the very stupid uh, collection. <laughs> yes. Yeah, a, a young guy, he loved Kentucky Fried Chicken. So he ate a lot of fried chicken. He gathered the bones. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> he made a chicken from the bones. <laughs> he made a chicken from the bones? <laughs> yeah, like a uh, chicken. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Uh, put uh, each uh, bond uh, with the glue. <laughs> okay, now that is that is a good one. Maybe that's a topper. Uh, okay, that's a good one. All right, he rearranged the bones back into it. <laughs> interesting. Uh, okay, that's very interesting. Um, uh, it, uh, and it's, it is very unusual. But I have to share this with you. That reminds me of something. Now, I know you guys probably don't eat that much turkey in your cultures. But uh, in Amer Americans eat turkeys, not just Thanksgiving, but we other times of the year we have turkeys. I knew more than one person, and this may sound totally weird. I think it's very American. The breastbone right here, this... Right here, uh, this, what is this called? Not breastbone, but your clavicle that comes down like this, it forms like a Y, and then it meets on your breastbone. So anyway, uh, in a turkey, or a chicken has the same thing. Uh, this is called the wishbone. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Wishbone. Yeah, I wishbone. Heard. Okay. So uh, anyway, the normal thing to do is the wishbone is like a Y, and you take one side, and your friend or sister or whoever takes the other side, and you both pull the sides of the Y, the wishbone, and it breaks, and whoever gets the bigger piece, the side with uh, more left to it, gets their wish. You make a wish, and then you – that's why wishbone – and you pull it apart, and whoever wins gets their wish. But uh, my aunt, and, and and I remember other like my friend's mother, other people collect the wishbones, like uh, on a like a, oh, I don't know curtain rod or something hanging in the kitchen. Every time they get a new wishbone, they dry it out a little in the oven and stick it up there. So they had this collection, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 wishbones, dead, dead turkeys, uh, keeping a count of how many turkeys they ate. I don't know. And then going for a big wishing party. I, I'm not sure why, but they, I saw that before, collecting the wishbones. <laughs> collecting. Yeah, it is weird. It was like more than one person. I, I knew a few people who did that. Yeah, you're right. It is weird. Um, yeah, I'm on the line, if I may. The, uh, yeah. Here, are, there is with the wishbone, the wishbone, uh -huh. um, the same superstition. Uh, if you get the bigger part, you are so lucky. No, perhaps you is yeah. different because you don't you don't have the opportunity to to make you wish, but um, when you broke the wishbone, the bigger part 
is the owner of the big bird park has um, has a lucky a lucky day or a lucky week. Um, okay. With the whisper from the um, chicken, but for the chicken. No, with the, okay. See. Hmm. All right. Hmm. Yeah. No. It's that's the same exact thing. Most people break them as soon as they get them. They break them. Then they try to get their wish. A little uh, competition, or whatever. But a few people act just. I don't know why they don't break. They don't do that. They just collect them to bring them luck. I don't know. Silliness. Uh, anyway, it's interesting, strange but true. Uh, okay, uh, Ken, uh, back to you. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, do you have any hobbies, or have you even when you were younger? Did you ever have any hobbies that had to do with crafts, making things? Crafts making thing. Crafts slash making things like crafts. pottery crafts. A craft. Yeah. Uh, I'm not good at hand crafting, so <laughs> probably. <Okay. laughs> yeah, I'm not having such ho such hobby. Yeah. Yeah. My. Watch me yeah. either. But, uh, okay. Yeah, m my hobbies are collecting CD or record before CD era, or going to concert. Something like that. <laughs> All right, you like to collect music. Do you have yeah. vinyl? I abandon. I, I throw them away because I don't have. Ah! Anymore. Yeah. Sacrilegious. That's yeah, horrible. but uh, oh kind of. Uh, yeah, but uh, I have a uh, CDs. I still have uh, have CD because uh, still CD has a good sound quality uh, because MP3, you know. Cut a uh, ultra a uh, ultra sound. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, if you listen to the music earphones, it's okay. And or uh, cheap head uh, uh, kind of inside computer uh, with a cheap speaker is okay. But uh, if you listen to it in a, a somewhat good speaker, uh, quality of sound MPC is not good good enough. So yeah. I think in the past a high resolution sound. Downloading, I uh, not in the past, uh, in the future, and now it, even now uh, some site uh, uh, high resolution sound file available from some some site. So maybe it can be uh, music can be downloaded, could be downloaded uh, high resolution file uh, in uh -huh. the yeah in the end yeah yeah I guess but uh, another parent in you know, Spotify appeared. People don't buy or download music; just they access the site to listen to it. Like right, streaming, right, radio, right. Radio. streaming. Yeah. yeah, I still love listening to vinyl. I the mm. hiss pop. <laughs> I I like it. I okay. don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I kind of like it. I don't know if it's sentimental or what. Um, when I moved to the Philippines, I sold my vinyl collection, but I had a pretty big vinyl collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of miss it. So I'm horrified to hear you threw away your vinyl. <laughs> yeah, I, no! I I put in a, uh, I put it on my head room pretty a long time, pretty long years. But mm -hmm. I I sold. I don't have record player. Maybe I cannot return to record because it's not so e easy to deal with. And and I don't have a good studio, so I don't. Uh, I don't listen to this record in a good quality of sound. If you have a good uh, player and system, maybe record uh, is uh, other uh, good quality because they record all uh, you know wave of sound. They don't cut anything. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I, just thinking about uh, another uh, I found that a terrifying story throwing away their vinyl and then I was thinking about uh, terrifying collections and I, I don't this is totally not to do with what you're saying but I it reminds me of collections that horrify me we talked about the butterflies earlier I have a cousin who collects beers all right but he collects cans sometimes some bottles mostly cans for some reason I don't know why but not empty, full. Oh. It's like sacrilege. What a horrible thing. 
He's got like 1,200 cans of beer in his house. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> but he doesn't drink them. He doesn't even drink beer anymore. He quit drinking. He's like a horrible. What are you doing? With... <laughs> rob his house. Steal his beer. Uh, anyway. <laughs> it's a terrifying collection. Heidi, on the other hand, I know that you are crafty. Is that right? No, that is not good English right there. Um, you have skill in crafts. Am I correct in making that assumption, Heidi? Uh, crafts. Uh, crafts. D using your hands to make things. Yeah. Are, clothes, yeah, for example. Oh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Right. I know about your, your hobby of making clothes. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you have, do you do any other crafty yeah thing. many people uh, can sew anything but something but depend yeah, I, I on person it's different my case i want to sew only cross uh, jacket or pant or brass or anything but the other person uh, partially uh, she saw saw uh, curtain or bed cover or pillowcase yeah and another person always saw uh, bag, handbags. Mm hmm Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, what, it's beyond me. I, I once attempted to sew I, and design. I designed, hmm, I designed my, you know the tennis visors where they have a, a strap and then the, like <laughs> yeah. this? Okay, I created my own. I'm not very cr craftsman-like either. Like Ken, I'm just hopeless. You should have seen this. I, I, am, I have no sense of fashion whatsoever. I made it out of thick corduroy cloth. You know corduroy. I know. I know. Yeah, really ugly cloth to begin with. And it was a deep, like, uh, I don't know, royal purple magenta. <laughs> really <laughs> ugly color. <laughs> yeah. It was like the epitome of the worst fashion you've ever seen, sewn by a blind monkey, I suppose. It looked like a, a crown for a clown or something. It was the most – you couldn't even tell what it was, I, you know. How do you like it? How do you like my creation? And people would say, what is it? <laughs> you know you're not very good at sewing if people look at your sewing and say, what is it? <laughs> yeah, so – my one and only attempt at sewing. I, I gave up. I realized. Have you ever collected your skin? No. What are you talking about? Yeah, uh, someone is collecting his skin. Uh, sometimes the skin shed off. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. True. Uh, then he put all of that shed, uh, shedding skin in the jar. <laughs> Oh, that's that's not right. That's just not right. <laughs> well, other people, other several, very few people are gathering earwax. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's that's also not right. Oh, disgusting. Okay. Oh, well, you want to talk disgusting hobbies? My one of my best friends in high school. Not my best best friend, but a, a very good friend in high school collected his used gum. All right, every time he instead of throwing away the gum, he would stick it onto his like gum ball. So it grew to the size of a bowling ball. Wow. <laughs> I'm totally not kidding. He was heartbroken. Okay, I'll, I ha must tell you the story now. It grew to the size of a bowling ball, and as it eventually slowly built up, it dried out. And if you ever decide to make your own giant gumball, what will happen is the center becomes hollow. Okay? It, I don't know why. I don't know what scientific reason or whatever. But for some reason, as it dries, it becomes hollow until it's like a, like a shell. And my friend was heartbroken. I remember he had a party, and he, uh, he, the gumball, I don't know, got 
knocked off a table or something happened and it broke and so it, it you could see the empty shell and you know we all thought it was funny and ridiculous but he I thought he was gonna cry I think maybe he did cry <laughs> he was totally crushed uh, all right uh, I need to welcome Samira hi Samira hello 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 how are you um, fine just for a cup. <laughs> well, good morning to you. Thank you. If it's still morning. <laughs> uh, okay. We've been talking about hobbies and sharing some stories. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. Uh, so you can catch up. What are your hobbies? Photography. <laughs> oh, my my hobby is uh, searching the internet. Is it hobby? <laughs> sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, I like to search the internet for information, what which is important for me. I like to study philosophy in internet. I can find a lot of uh, videos about uh, human nature, about uh, about animals. So yeah. <laughs> I use a lot of my time to find information what I really like in the internet. Information which I really like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not information what I really like. Information which I really like or, uh, you know, uh, okay. Uh, all right. Now, the other thing we were sharing, swapping some seriously crazy stories about uh, hobbies that our friends or neighbors or people we know have that are very unusual and I must say we've come up with some doozies some really good ones do you do any of your friends have a strange or unusual hobby well let me think I will tell you later <laughs> okay fair enough uh, all right let me uh, let me go back to uh, to you, Ken. Yes. Sir. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, are, is there any hobby that you would like to do? If you yeah. had, uh, I don't know, the time or the money or something. Yeah. The opportunity. Uh, yeah. I not uh, the other uh, the, I uh, you, you, I you are talking about for sale, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the right. other. Yeah. Maybe I I watched the uh, TV shows about that. You know, kind of uh, the department store is good for fi for find finding fossils. You know, oh. marbles. You know, <laughs> are used in you know such uh, the not only the department store building. So people uh, that that guy are you know searching for the fossil in the urban area. A lot of fossil are are in the marble stone. On the ah. department building or you okay. know, like government, government buildings, building. the library, yeah. university, yes. Yes, where yes. they use marble. Yes. Oh, he could go to cemeteries where there's uh, mausoleums. <laughs> okay. yeah. And some department store, you know, uh, display the, uh, you know, kind of uh, this is a uh, uh, fossil or something like that. The board. <coughs> yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. They, they oh. prepare the board. Board you, for yeah, what fossil or something like that. This is a. I I don't know the name of the you know creature, but maybe such kind right. of display. Yeah. You just totally reminded me of another weird hobby that some people do in America. I'm curious <laughs> if they do it in Japan or other places. Um, I have to describe it. I don't know the name for it. I'm not sure. So I have to describe it. Speaking of graveyard, I said you could, the graveyard, I reminded myself. Mm -hmm. You go to a graveyard and you take a big piece of paper, like artist's paper. Mm -hmm. It's kind of big. Anyway, and you put the paper over the gravestone and then you take like, uh, not chalk, but charcoal, charcoal. Uh, yeah. Rub it back and forth. I guess it's called a rubbing, maybe? Uh, mm. Anyway, I, I know what you mean. Yes, some people, yeah, such kind of, uh, I guess, make a copy. <laughs> yeah, make a copy. That's that, right. That way, yeah, in such way, yes. 
Yeah, and they, I, I knew people back, not a lot of people, but I knew a few <laughs> people who did that and like saved them and framed them even. A little morbid and scary. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't, again, I don't know, like in Europe or in Japan, but some people in the United States, their headstones or gravestones say some pretty weird, scary stuff, <laughs> really. Mm -hmm. Sometimes very odd. Um, sometimes funny. Sometimes a little frightening. Uh, you don't really know what they mean. <laughs> mm. Some strange poetry or something mm -hmm. seems frightening. But anyway, they would collect these weird things. Uh, I don't know. Kind of a weird hobby. I'm not sure. Uh, Heidi, how, how about you? Is there anything that you would like to do? You would like to take up if you if you start a hobby, you take up a hobby. Any hobby you'd like to take up if you had the money or the time or whatever you need? Diamond. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Uh, yeah, no kidding. Emeralds, rubies. <laughs> yeah. Sapphire. <laughs> Colorful card. Uh, precious stones. <laughs> Well, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to ask her, uh, instead of uh, uh, the flowers, uh, she should paint, uh, paint uh, with a precious stone, <laughs> color stone. Hmm, I would yeah. love to be given. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, okay, well, yeah. You know, there's, what's his name? There's movie stars, you know, people with lots of money. Who collect like cars, <laughs> motorcycles, cars? Yeah, I I find that kind of an incredible hobby as well. Uh, that's a little yeah. crazy. Uh, some rich person in uh, Middle East country. Uh, he collected a lot of uh, cars, and then for for his cars, he constructed like a gym, like gym. Very big place. Okay. Yeah. Right. Like to display them, more or less, yeah. like yeah. his own personal mm -hmm. museum kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember such a thing. I uh, some Hollywood movie star. I cannot remember. I really, honestly, can't remember which one. But very similar. I same idea. Like the mar, the white columns. Like this, this whole display area with the white columns, like in Greek temples, all to to display his car collection. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. H how about you, Samira? Is there any hobby you would like to do in the future? Yeah, have a chance. Um. Well, uh, in the past, I for a while trained wrestling. So in the future, I would like to continue to do so. <laughs> you did what? I'm sorry. Wrestling. Wrestling? Yes. Oh, okay. You trained wrestling. I okay. Yeah. I it'd be more common to say I trained as a wrestler. Okay, I trained as a wrestler. All right. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of wrestling? Like uh, WWF? Uh, like Hulk Hogan and? Uh, Jumping no, off the ropes and uh, while, so I couldn't become a champion. <laughs> but um, a lot of my friends become a champions because it's pretty easy in Bulgaria. And <laughs> oh come on, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's and... pretty easy in Bulgaria. What? What are you saying? The well, yeah, my country is small and uh, and. Uh, in like in the games, uh, you are divided on your um, what was it? Uh, weight, weight class. Yeah, yes. weight, weight class. That's right. And plus, you are a girl, so you don't have uh, a lot of uh, <laughs> um, competition. I, I mean, see. Uh, yeah. So, so you, you just become on the first or on the second <laughs> place anyway. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. And if you only weigh 30 kilos, then you're going to take your weight division every time because there's nobody else. <laughs> no, no, it's for children. Ah, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, that'd be an interesting uh, hobby. Would, would you would you get, would you pursue it to the point that you actually did like the Olympics or? No, no, no. I really dislike the Olympic Games. Uh, you do? Uh, yeah, especially ra uh, wrestling. I think it's uh, they they just change it so much. It's not a game. They just try to show who is uh, better in the trick. It's uh, not a fight anymore. So I don't like it. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Interesting. Do you know that they are, if they haven't already, and I'm not sure, it is scheduled to be removed from the Olympics. Wrestling, Gre yeah. Greco-Roman wrestling, is scheduled oh. to be removed. Thanks, God, man. <laughs> See, I'm shocked. This is like the original Greek Olympics sport. You know, that's like throwing, getting rid of the discus or the javelin, sports that are from the origins of the Olympics themselves. I am well, actually but, appalled. You know, it's just a business. It's just a business. And, uh, you know, the Queen of England jumps from parachute in this business. So there's no place for wrestling anymore. You didn't sell it? The Queen you of know? England? Yeah, Did she jumped with parachute. What? <laughs> yes. She jumped from a parachute? Yes, with James Bond. She did? Well, yeah, um, yeah kind of. Maybe it's uh, not exactly true, but... Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you can see it on the internet uh, when they open the Olympiada in London. So. Oh, okay. Oh, you're telling okay, so you're saying you object to the Olympics as a whole because they've become too commercial. Yes, exactly. Okay. Not for real Olympic games, which were about how many? <laughs> two thousand ago. To be honest, okay. Yeah. I, I to be honest, I much prefer the Winter Olympics. I never mm -hmm. watched the Summer Olympics. I haven't watched them in years since, I don't know, since Atlanta. Many, many years. It's been a long time. Did uh, you uh, Olympic in Sochi? No, I didn't watch that. I protested. I boycotted <laughs> it. <laughs> I boycotted it. No, okay, I didn't watch it. No, and not, I didn't really boycott it. But if, if you know anything about me, you know that I was here in the Philippines. So think about that. Philippines, Winter Olympics. How many athletes do you think participated from the Philippines? I'll give you a, I'll give you a, I'll give you a clue. It, that's exactly right, Heidi. Very yeah, good. You know, yeah. One. I think so. I, I, I'm not even sure, but I think so. I think he was a skater, but uh, yeah, one athlete. So you know that showed him. He he like performed once for five or ten minutes, and then he was done. And then the Olympics was done for the Philippines. Okay, we're done. Bye. Go home. <laughs> there was there was no coverage. Absolutely zero, uh, except for his performance, literally, which they showed 142 times. But other than that, uh, that was <laughs> there was no Olympics. Uh, so to speak. Uh, okay. Uh, Ken, speaking of Olympics and sports, mm -hmm. uh, do, do you have any hobbies that involve athletic? Uh, uh, swimming. Swimming. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I watched two Olympic uh, participants. One, is, one of these was pretty famous. Maybe he won the silver or gold medal at that time. And I, uh, I, part, I participated at 20, uh, uh, 12, how can I say, uh, 12 hours uh, endurance swim uh, as a volunteer. I, I was not a swimmer. But, and he misunderstood me as a kind of staff of the that pool or gym or something. So he, he asked yeah. me how to wait to the office of that that the, that you know that that match that gym. So I uh, gladly answer him <laughs> how to how to, yeah, how to go to. That. Wow, he talked to me or something like that. 
And, <laughs> wow. Yeah. And another Olympic participant, the RP, uh, actually he's living in my town. And he, when he was off, he uh, came to the pool I, I went to. So I met, I met him several times. And one time I talked to him. And that's cool. a kind, kind of small talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of cool. That's cool. I I come from a puny little town, population 3,500, but from my puny little town, we've had three medalists in the Olympics in skiing. Mm -hmm. Three. No. Oh. Scratch that. Four. Uh, four. <laughs> uh, I've personally skied with three of them, actually. Oh. Yeah. Uh, anyway... Yeah, it's kind of pretty cool. Wow. It seems like you met a lot of famous people. I, I did. Like, like the not, not, on purpose. <laughs> no, not, on, not on purpose, surely by accident. A lot of it had to do with where I live, I, I, where I'm from. Uh, very tiny town, but very exclusive ski resort. Mm -hmm. Very, The rich and famous, you know. So. It couldn't be helped. There's, you know, there's only a hundred people in the town. So when a famous person came, we all saw him. Sounds <laughs> like. Sorry, Samira. Uh, maybe talking with the other person. Oh, okay. Uh, I think America gathered a, a lot of uh, gold medals uh, every Olympic game. So uh, medals are not so much important for America. Yeah. But in, for Japanese, the gold medal is very big, big. No. Oh, you're, you're telling me? I live in the Philippines. You kidding? If somebody got a gold medal in the Philippines, they would elect them God, King, Emperor, President forever. <laughs> <laughs> you're telling me? Uh, okay. Um, thanks a lot, guys. I see by the clock on the wall that our time is up. Thank you for the very interesting uh, conversation. Wonderful. I'll see you next time here on Verbling. Thank you very much.